today I have a haul from Colt Pens, um, and I bought a bunch of inks and stationary things, um, and I wanted to just share. So I am located in the U.S., um, and Colt Pens is a online um, fountain pen and stationery um, shop in located in the U.K., um, but honestly, I've ordered from them a bunch of times, and actually the prices sometimes can um, turn out to be a bit uh, more affordable, um, even uh, with shipping. Um, they do have free shipping if you reach a certain amount, um, and so sometimes it turns out to be even better, um, even though I'm located in the U.S., and their shipping is incredibly fast, um, so I really like shopping with them. So the first thing I had, um, I've been looking for this for a while, but this is the Midori Mini Cleaner 2 in the limited edition, like, sage green color. And this is just particularly helpful when you have little eraser bits or just things to clean on your desk and you just kind of roll it and it will sweep it up. And then it has this little um, area to throw out the little uh, bits that you pick up. So really helpful for my desk. Then I picked up two Diamine inks um, for my fountain pens. Um, this Diamine ink is about $2.40 and then in the US um, it's a lot more than that. So I always um, love to pick these up when I order from Colt Pens um, because I just like these inks and I like the 30 milliliter size. I think it's just more usable and the variety of colors is really nice. Um, so I picked up the Ancient Copper and Amazing Amethyst. Um, I was looking for a more autumn, fall um, fountain pen ink color, so the Ancient Copper looked really nice to me. It did turn out to be a bit more um, red, in my opinion, um, and I was looking for something that was more like orange, um, pumpkin-y color, uh, but it's still really pretty. Um, so looking forward to using that in my pens. And then the Amazing Amethyst um, is just a beautiful purple color that I was looking for um, to match a new pen that I got, which is the Pilot Decimo in violet slash purple. Um, and I'm definitely going to ink it up with the Amazing Amethyst. So very excited for that. Next ink that I purchased is the Diatramentis document ink in gray. And um, this is another one where on Colt's pens it's about $12. And then in the US at other retailers, it's about close to $20. So it's an ink that I've been wanting to try um, because I know a lot of people really enjoy this, especially the black document ink or the archive one oh, because it is waterproof it's supposed to dry really quickly so great for daily use I think I would like to use this to ink up my pilot uh, vanishing point which I have in a black mat and I just prefer gray ink um, because I just like it as an alternative to black and I'm really happy with how this looks it's definitely a true like deep gray which is um, like I said an, a nice alternative to black um, and I haven't really tried it out to see um, like in terms of how fast it dries and the waterproofness um, but I'm just really looking forward to um, this ink because I just would like something that doesn't smear and I can write quickly with it for work and things like that. Then I picked up the Colorverse Minhua series. This is in the color Dan Huang, which um, this collection, um, the Minhua series, is a second series of their Korean special projects, which um, is the theme of Korean traditional culture. And Minhua comes from the Chosun folk art, which is art painted on paper or canvas. Um, and it has like nature themes. Um, so this uh, color I was really drawn to because it's more of like... So the next thing I picked up was the Colorverse Minhua series in Dan Huang. And this is their 
uh, second series of Korean focused fountain pen inks. Um, and Minhwa is the traditional Chosan folk art painted on paper or canvas, and it usually has very um, nature inspired themes. Um, so these inks are focused on like lotus flower and peony. Um, and there's four colors in this collection, and I was really drawn to the Dan Huang color, which um, is supposed to be more of a yellow, orange, and red toned color. Um, in the bottle, it looks more red, which is interesting. Um, and then um, I swatched it uh, initially, and it looks very like light orange with um, shades of yellow, and it's very light. Um, and I was very surprised because the ink itself is very watery. Like it just kind of feels like watercolor, which I guess is what the collection is supposed to be, but it doesn't feel like fountain pen ink at all. Like it's very, uh, just very watery. Um, so I, but I really love the color and when it dries, it, um, it dries pretty quickly and just looks, um, very different. So I like it. Um, I think I'll just have to get used to it and see how I can use it. And the interesting thing is, um, everywhere in the U S, uh, this collection, um, it says that it was released in September of this year. Um, but it doesn't seem like it's available yet in the U S. So, um, it's still pretty new. So, Okay, and then the big thing I got was an Esterbrook fountain pen that I've had my eye on for so long and I just bit the bullet and got it. But before I show you that, um, Colt Pens had a um, promo where if you buy an Esterbrook pen, you get one of their new notebooks. So I got a free um, Esterbrook notebook in the theme of their Nova Blue fountain pen really nice um, and it feels like really nice dotted fountain pen paper so that'll be nice to try out. The Esterbrook fountain pen that I picked up is the Esterbrook JR pocket fountain pen um, which is of course a bit smaller than um, your average fountain pen, um, or at least from Esterbrook. I have one other Esterbrook fountain pen in my collection, which is an Esterbrook SD, which I really love, but it is a bit larger um, for my small hands. Um, but this one I've had my eye on for a while. So it's the JR Pocket Fountain Pen in Pumpkin Latte, which is just perfect for fall. And it is so gorgeous in person. It kind of has swirls of gold and brown and shimmers. And it just is reminiscent of like a pumpkin latte with the orange on the top. Just so beautiful. And I love the size of it. And the nib I got on this is the Custom Grind Gina or journaling nib which I really love. I have it on my other Esterbrook SD, um, and that's why I opted to get it for this one as well, because it's just one of my favorites. It's a medium nib that's ground to a stub, I believe, um, and it just kind of allows the writer to have a little bit more flourish in everyday writing. Um, that's why it's also known as the journaling nib, and Gina is the uh, nib master who created the nib for Esterbrook. And I just, I really like it. It's, it's has a really nice feel for me as a, a writer with smaller hands, and it's just like the perfect pen size. Um, the other thing to note that I love about Esterbrook is that with every pen, 
not only do you get, of course, like a free additional ink, but it comes with a converter. And it's, I just think if you're paying over $200 for a fountain pen, why can't the companies include the converters? Like, I just think that is a given, but who am I to say? I just think that's a really nice touch. And I want to compare this to my other fountain pens because I think nobody really does that. And um, this is just like a perfect everyday size for a fountain pen, in my opinion. Um, whereas the Esterbrook SD is a really great pen. I don't find it to be too big or um, like heavy or anything like that, but it is it is a bit bigger to like kind of take out in public, at least for me, and or or travel with. Um, so I would feel more comfortable with using this every day. Even though they are an American fountain pen company, it's so much cheaper to purchase this from Colt's Pens. Um, so uh, that's why I finally just I really wanted this this fountain pen. So purchased it from Colt's Pens, and it was it's about twenty dollars cheaper. Um, purchasing there than any U.S. retailer currently. So very happy with that and can't wait to ink this up. I think I might ink it up with Ancient Copper or maybe a more brown fountain pen ink that I have. So yeah. So I wanted to do a quick comparison um, of the JR pocket pen compared to some of my other fountain pens that I have so that you can see the size differences and um, just how they compare to other pens. So compared to my other Esterbrook, which I mentioned, the Esterbrook SD, you can see how much larger and a little bit wider this pen is compared to the JR Pocket Pen. Now for someone with small hands, this is still a pretty comfortable pen, but um, when you look at the nib, compared to the JR Pocket Pen, the Esterbrook SD nib is just so much bigger in size. And it's just interesting to see. Um, and then compared to the pocket pen when posted, it is longer and a tad bit wider on the grip, but not uncomfortably so. Um, but in this case, the JR Pocket Pen is more portable, um, it's better for smaller hands, um, and it's just a really different type of pen. And then comparing it to another um, more full-size pen, which is, this is the Twisby Eco, and this is the Jade color. This is a more standard size pen, I find, and when you see it compared to the JR Pocket Pen, it is, um, you know, pretty much your standard size pen, even compared to the SD. The SD is still going to be a tad bit longer and a bigger nib, but still generally like the same size. Um, but compared to the JR Pocket Pen, the JR Pocket Pen is still smaller in size. And then another standard size fountain pen, at least in my opinion, is the Lamy Safari. And you can see that it is still a bit longer when posted compared to the JR Pocket Pen um, and close to the Twisby Eco as well. And then in comparison to a Sailor Pro Gear, this is a Sailor Pro Gear in the cocktail collection. This is the Gin Martini color. And uh, Sailor Pro Gear, they're a little more uh, thicker in the barrel and the grip. But it is comparable when posted in size to the Esterbrook JR Pocket Pen. In fact, um, you can kind of tell that the Esterbrook is a little bit longer when posted um, and still a bit slimmer um, in the grip. And then this is a comparison with a Sailor Pro Gear Slim. This is a 
Sailor and Yoseka stationery collaboration in their refresh pen. And when posted, the Esterbrook JR pocket pen is slightly longer, but they are about, I would say, very close in um, grip width, um, and they feel pretty similar, although I will say the Esterbrook does still feel a lot slimmer than a Sailor Pro Gear Slim. When posted, I did notice that the Pro Gear Slim is comparable to the Esterbrook JR pen. And then comparing it to this pocket pen, this is the Opus 88 mini pocket pen. Um, it's not my favorite pocket pen just because it is wider. It's not as easy to, you know, post the cap and have it stay on, um, but it is very cute. Um, when posted, it is still smaller than the Esterbrook JR, but it is wider in its grip. And because it's kind of a wide and fat pen, it's not the most comfortable in my opinion. When posted, it is still smaller than the JR Pocket Pen. And then one of my favorite pocket pens is the Twisby Mini Rose Gold 2 pen. And I think that this is such a comfortable mini pocket pen. Um, I think it's slightly wider in grip than the JR Pocket Pen, um, but I don't really notice too much of a difference. They're very similar in that um, small size, uh, but a very fine writer and just comfortable and portable. Um, but as you can see, the Twisby is smaller um, compared to the JR Pocket Pen when posted as well as uh, when capped. And then the Caveco Sport, this is in Macchiato, of course is going to be one of the smallest pens when capped. And then when posted, it is still smaller than the Esterbrook JR Pocket Pen. Um, I feel like the widths of the grip are pretty similar, actually. Um, and then when capped, um, I'll show you the comparison to the JR. But still both very comfortable in the hand. And yeah. And here's a quick comparison of all the other pens um, compared to the JR when capped. Was my little haul from Colt Pens. Um, let me know if you um, have any favorites from this video or any recommendations or if you've tried any of these fountain pen inks or want to. Um, thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video.